Buenas tardes, Nogalenses. Welcome to another episode of El Nino with Joe Wright. I'm really excited about this episode. We've got a lot going on tonight, so I'm going to try to get through everything as quickly as possible while still giving you the, the show that you guys deserve and that you're used to. Before we get started, please go ahead and give us a like and a share. We've got a lot, like I said, we've got a lot of important stuff to cover today, a lot of really big things that we're talking about, so make sure that everybody has the opportunity to hear about it. Um, you know, everybody deserves the opportunity to know what's going on in their town, so make sure that they do. Um, go to our social media pages at We Love No Gallus. That's on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and we're all over. I mean, look for us, give us a like, check out our feed, I mean, see what we have to offer, and um, let, make sure that you share our pages too. Let everybody know what's going on. Uh, also, thank you to our new sponsor, the Fresh Produce Association of the Americas, which is a sponsor that I actually, I, you know, I hold personally close. I used to work with them. I do still work with them often, and I have a really good relationship with the Fresh Produce Association, and I'm so excited to work with them on this show. It's, it's great. They've got a lot of good things that they do for the community, that they do for the produce industry, which is huge in the, com in the community, and they've got the 50th annual convention, the historic 50th annual con Fresh Produce Convention coming up in less than a month. Uh, all right, so let's get into things. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but it's fall, finally. <laughs> it's cold outside, man. I've been putting on sweaters. I mean, I'm actually wearing this jacket, and I'm not hot. So it's, uh, you know, I, I enjoyed it. I, I like summer. I love summer, but I like when it starts to get cold, too. I mean, when you finally start to really feel like fall, which here is rare. I mean, it's summer all the way through November, practically. Um, and then when we hit spring, it's summer again. Uh, and another great thing that I really love is it's, it's October, which for me is awesome because I love Halloween. It is one of my favorite holidays by far. I go all out with the decorations. I mean, we got some photos that we're going to show you um, of how I decorate my house. I mean, as you see, our co-host right here, this is Charles, by the way. This is Charles, our co-host. He's actually an intern. He used to intern with the Fresh Produce Association last year. If you check out their, their Facebook page, you'll see, you'll see him as, as their intern. And... Um, you know, I mean, he's doing just about as good here as he did there. But he'll be my co-host for the month of October, along with the duck, of course. You know our duck. Um, and, you know, he contributes to my decorations at home. I, I go, like I said, I go all out. But it also means scary movies. It means costumes, you know, great stuff. I mean, for the first time in a long time, I actually plan to dress up this year. And uh, my son convinced me to be a pirate. So I'm going to be a pirate this year for Halloween and go trick-or-treating with him. But like I said, scary movies and scary stories. Now, scary stories, I mean, you may be sick of hearing this already, but I have a new book out right here, Unlucky 7, Volume 3. This is the third um, installment of my Unlucky 7 anthology series. And what it is is seven short stories. Each book has seven short stories. Um, and they aren't, you know, some of them link up a little bit, but you don't have to read, you know, this is a question I get a lot. You don't have to read the first one to, for, to understand the second one or the third one. All the stories are individual. They all, they're all separate. And uh, I'm really excited about this one. Um, I've put uh, so much work into it. I mean, and not only as the author, but this is the first book that I'm publishing with through my publishing company, London Bridge Publishing Services. Um, I've got a couple other authors who are going to be coming, you know, that'll be published through me in the next couple of years that I'm working with. But this is the first book to come out through them. That means I did all the work. I did the design work. I did the formatting. I've been, I've established distribution lines. I've set up the printer, um, you know, built a lot of relationships over the last three years to help this happen and to make sure that it's distributed and sold worldwide and available for everybody. My last book was huge in the UK for whatever reason. Um, people in England just really liked my stories. Um, and this one I'm hoping is just as big or bigger. Um, now, besides that, you know, along with that book, um, we have a video. You know, I, there's a trailer, an ad spot for this video that I also put a lot of work into that I feel came out pretty good. We're going to show you that to you guys really quick. Edgardo, go ahead and show it to him.
Okay, so that's the ad spot. I mean, it's all over social media. It's being promoted on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. Um, you can you'll, you might see it around. Um, also, you may, I've been putting a lot of effort into the market on this book. I mean, I know I'm talking about a lot about myself, but don't worry, I'm going to move on past me soon. But um, tonight, actually at eight o'clock, on Creepy Pasta, you guys may have heard of Creepy Pasta. It's actually the website where um, Slender Man was first con uh, conceived and and shown to the world. Um, there's a uh, podcast called Spooky Boo's Scary Story Time, who at eight o'clock tonight will be reading one of the stories from Unlucky Seven Volume Three from my book called Under the Blood Moon. And um, the website where you can go to to see that is www scarystorytime.com you know um, it's right there at the bottom we'll put a link in the comments for you so you can so you can click on that if you want um and i'm really excited i'm as soon as i get done here i'm heading home i'm gonna listen to the podcast oh and other really exciting news and this is something that i literally just finalized right before coming here i mean it's not even completely finalized we still you know not sure about the time but it'll be around four o'clock next week at the theater um, I will be autographing copies of, copies of my book. We'll do a book signing right there at the movie theater, Oasis Cinema Nine, um, right to you know to coincide with the opening of the new Halloween movie. Which I love the Halloween movies, and Jamie Lee Curtis is coming back to the franchise. I'm really excited. It's gonna it's gonna be awesome. Um, come sign, get my books. Come see a movie. Get some popcorn. You know, well, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. I'm really really excited about this one. So one last thing, go to Amazon, look me up on Amazon, you know, go the, there's a link I think here on We Love Nogales, um, there's links on my Facebook page uh, for, to, to find my book on Amazon, order your copy, if you don't order it now, I mean you can pick up copies from me, you can pick them up at the book signing, um, message us, message us right here on We Love Nogales and, and let us know that you want an autographed copy. And, um, and I'll make sure that, that, uh, that we, you get um, hooked up. I mean, if you, if you buy, buy your copy from Amazon or from a bookstore, just um, message us, and I'll make sure that it gets autographed. All right, so moving on from my book, but on to another book. This is the book that I'm reading in October. It's A People's History of the Vampire Uprising. It actually came out in the Nogales International, um, I think about a month or so ago. And the author, Raymond A. Villarreal, decided that this vampire uprising would begin right here in Nogales. Now, he's from Texas. He's not from Nogales. Um, and I, I've reached out to him, and uh, I've started a conversation with him. And, and you know, we'll, I'll talk to him a little bit more over the next couple of days, I hope. Um, the only thing that I can tell so far, it's, it's beautifully written. It's a great book so far. I, I'm really enjoying it. But I don't like the way he portrays Nogales. Um, he kind of, you know, portrays it as this hole-in-the-wall, wild west, dusty old town with incompetent law enforcement and, you know, just meth heads. And I just, I don't like the way that he makes Nogales look. And like, I'm only in the first chapter, so maybe it will get better. I started reading it last night, so maybe it'll change. But from what I've perceived here, it's, that's where it starts. And, and I, you know, I don't really like that. I love Nogales, and I don't, that's, that's obviously not no, what Nogales is. Uh, but it's a good book. It's worth reading. I mean, look it up. I, from what I understand, there's even a movie in the works. So a big, major Hollywood production. So that's, that's exciting. I'm, I'm really excited for whenever that comes out. I will definitely see it. So last week I mentioned, um, you know, on our, our show last week, I mentioned that I was at an event with the food bank. Um, and it was an event to th say thank you to people who work with them and things like that. While I was there, I was able to get an interview with um, Dana Yost, who's, I believe, the, um, the vice president or something of the, of the, not of the Nogales Food Bank, but of the Southern Arizona Food Banks. And we're going to play that interview real quick. The sound quality isn't, isn't perfect, so bear with us. But um, here's the interview. All right, Dana? Danny Yost, nice, nice, to, nice to meet you. I'm nice Joe Wright. Nice okay, so um, you know we're here at the Nogales I mean, the Nogales Community Food Bank. Yep. And how are things going? What do we have going on? So we have a uh, we're, produce season is getting ready to start in a few weeks, and we're just uh, taking this as an opportunity to say thank you to everybody in the industry and to say thank you to uh, everybody that has supported us and uh, having an event here in the Fall People are just talking about the service. 
Awesome. Very cool. And you mean, obviously, produce is big here in Nogales. Yeah, very much. And it's been for decades. Yeah. So, you know, the reality is one in four kids are going to go to bed in the state tonight. Not sure if they have a meal tomorrow. So the mission of this food bank is to try to do something about that and make a difference in this world. And, uh, you know, we serve more than 3,000 clients a year out of this food bank in Nogales. We have a lot of activities across uh, Nogales and we're trying to help the community. Uh, it's all because of our donors and how they're supporting us. Of course, and uh, I mean, this is this has been a big part of the community for a while. That it has been more than more than ten. We've been here more than ten years. Yeah, yeah, you guys have done a lot of good. I mean, I've covered other things that you guys have done in the past for other publications and stuff. And I've always been impressed with what you do. Yeah. Uh, do you have any? words for the people of Nogales? You know, the other thing that we're trying to do is we're trying to connect as many resources uh, with the food bank as we can to help people at many, many levels. Every Friday we have free legal aid advice here. We're putting in a community garden. We're working uh, with uh, farmers markets to get more produce into schools and things like that. And we can use a lot of help from the community to come down volunteer. Uh, we're trying to do everything we can to help support Nogales. Uh, the people of Nogales are awesome people and we're just proud to be a part of it. Awesome. Well, I thank you for uh, taking the time to talk. Thank you, John. Thank you for your pleasure meeting you. Thank you. All right, so um, that was my interview with Dana Yost of the Fresh um, of the Food Bank, sorry. Um, and it was a great event. I mean, the Food Bank, they do a lot of great things for the community. Um, one thing that I learned there is that produce that gets donated to the food bank here by the produce um, industry actually doesn't just feed Nogales. I mean, there's, they donate enough to not only supply to Nogales, but to supply to Tucson. And there's a lot of food deserts in Tucson where the only way people can get fresh fruits and vegetables is at the food bank. So, I mean, like I said, they do a lot of great things, um, provide a lot of, um, you know, great fruit and vegetables for, for kids and families that need it. Um, yesterday was Mental Health Awareness Day, and I just want to tell everybody that's watching right now that, you know, mental health is a very important issue. It's just as important as physical health. I mean, these issues, they're real. They are real issues that affect real people, hundreds of thousands across the whole world. And the disturbing lack of understanding and treatment for these um, disorders and diseases um, leads to hundreds of suicides annually. Um, it's sad. And I want, you, I want everybody to know, I mean, if you suffer from one or more mental health issues, just like I do, I mean, I suffer from de depression, I suffer from attention deficit, and, you know, it's affected my life. I want you to know that if you suffer from those, you're not alone that um, there are others who are, who are dealing with the issues just like you. And, um, and there's, ways, there's ways to get through. I mean, there's good times and there's bad times, and the bad times aren't permanent. They're always temporary. There are always good times on the horizon. So um, we're kind of packed with guests tonight. Uh, our first guest is Mikey Suarez of the um, Fresh Produce Association and, my, and of Mas Melons. And we also have an extra guest who will be coming after him and they're from Trucas, um, Nogales Trucking, Noga, um, Nogales Truck Club. Trucas, Nogales Truck Club. And I'm excited to talk to them about what they've got. But our first guest is Mikey Suarez, and he'll be here. Um, he should be here right about now.
right, we're back. Now, before we get started on the interview real quick, just want to remind you all, if you haven't done this already, give us a like and a share. I mean, the, our guests, um, they're, they work hard on the projects that they represent and the organizations that they represent. And we work hard on the show, you know, and we, we have a lot of good things that we, that we have to share. So make sure that everybody knows about it. Give us a like, give us a share, share with all your friends, share with your family, like us on social media, and, you know, make sure that everybody knows what's going on. Mikey Suarez, you want to introduce yourself real quick? Hey, how's it going, everybody? Mikey Suarez, Moss Melons and Grapes, and also representative of the uh, FPAA. All right, so um, you you know your Moss Melons is a family business, right? Yes, sir. My father started about twenty one years ago. About twenty one years ago, and he was in produce before he started Moss Melons. Right? Yeah, he probably had about uh, eight uh, ten years under his belt before he ventured off on his own. So when he okay. started the company, it was him and four growers from Caorca. Oh, wow. So okay. it's four growers and my father make up Moss Melons and Grapes, and we just celebrated our 21st anniversary on August 14th. Well, congratulations on that. That's awesome. Thank you. 21 Thank years you. is good. I mean, your company can drink now. It's legal. There you go, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there it is. Um, and we need it sometimes, yeah, the produce industry. But no, it's yeah, definitely we're, right. We're really happy about it, yeah. <laughs> so um, you're also on the board with the FPA, with the Fresh Produce Association of the Americas. Yeah. So I've been on the board for, this is my third year, um, you get elected on for two-year terms onto the board. And actually, this this term, I got elected onto the uh, executive board. Awesome. So uh, for me, I mean, it's just a blessing. And I love being uh, in the room with those guys. I mean, every single person in there has got 15 years' experience on me. Yeah. And uh, I can't want more for an aspiring produce man than to yeah, sit in a room with You're these. the youngest on the board, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. That is that is a blessing. And it's a, a testament to what you, you're you. capable of. Um. So your family, I mean, you, you're a produce family. You guys run deep. Like you said, you got, your dad started the company with a couple growers, and he was in the business beforehand. But um, did you always plan on being in produce? No. I actually wanted to be a chef. So when I really? graduated from college, I actually sat my parents down, and I talked to them, and I told them I wanted to be a chef. And I think that stems from my grandmother. She, was, she had a cook out of uh, necessity. Oh, she was the oldest of 12, I think. My mom, my mom might not That's be right. happy if I don't get that number right, yeah. but I think it's 12. <laughs> and uh, so she had to cook for all of them. Well, when you've got that many tios and tias, it's, yeah, hard. it's, it's easy to lose, lose count, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and I, I mean, I just uh, grew up cooking with her, and I always loved it. So when I graduated, I mean, I always grew up working for my father. Um, after school jobs, if I wasn't playing sports, I was working at Moss Mountains loading trucks, shredding papers, anything course, yeah. to keep me out of trouble, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I loved being there. But when I graduated, I wanted to go my own route, and I loved it. And I hope to one day do it again in a different capacity. But, I mean, I'm a produce guy from Nogales. Well, you know, yeah. it's interesting. This is actually a few years ago, and Jaime not, might not remember this, but I had a conversation with Jaime Chamberlain about growing up here in Nogales. Mm -hmm. and, and we talked about what, um, what options there were for mm -hmm. people who grew up in Nogales. And I, I, I commented that for me, I felt there were only really three real options if you wanted to stay in Nogales. There was produce, law enforcement, or criminal activities, okay. you know? I mean, and, and I, was, uh, I was young, you mm -hmm. know, when I, when I perceived this. There are a lot more options, obviously, mm -hmm. a whole lot more options. I mean, Absolutely. especially criminal activities is not an option. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what's, what's even worse about that is that I saw it as a negative that mm -hmm. those were the options but produce isn't a bad option it's a great industry with Absolutely. a lot of history in mm -hmm. the community i mean and it's it doesn't it, it's an opportunity to grow not just mm -hmm. in within produce but in an international trade in business and Absolutely. I mean, i'm sure you've learned a lot besides just selling produce yeah i mean i mean my official capacity at moss melons and grapes is the sales yeah sales and marketing but i mean i wear a lot of hats throughout the day i do grow relations i do uh trips down there. I do advo advocating with the FPAA, not mm -hmm. just uh, for the produce in general, but for our company. Um, I'll load trucks if we have to. I'll, uh, whatever I mean, it takes. Jack, well, whatever it takes, exactly. Yeah. And there's a lot of families that are mm -hmm. fully integrated into the produce industry here. I mean, so, I, I, when we were, Rosie Cornelius, who was on the show last mm -hmm. week, she works with you guys. Yes, just started with you guys. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah we're lucky to have her. Yeah, moved her whole sales team over there, which is mm -hmm. awesome. Um, we were talking about how, I mean, aside from just the people who own the companies, I mean, there are people on all levels of produce where the families are fully integrated and work mm -hmm. for different companies. I mean, mm -hmm. my wife's family um, is a produce family, and they all work at different levels of produce or have worked at different levels of produce from mm -hmm. distributor to working in the warehouses to sales. And, um, and that's, a, that's a story with a lot of families. Mm -hmm. 
and I think some people, and this is based on conversations I've had with people around town, mm -hmm. have this negative perception of what produce is. They feel like the, that it's an only option or that it's a last case scenario. As a young person coming up in the business, who's been, who's grown in the business, mm -hmm. what can you say to refute or to change their perception of what produce is? Um, if I'm talking to the, the younger demographic and they think that that's, um, they don't want to do it because their father does it or it seems boring, it's, it's not true. I mean, and, and also just like, just like Joe said, I mean, there's sales is just one aspect. Working in the warehouse is another aspect, but you got people that are, uh, um, accountants, you got people that are marketers, you have people who um, are warehouse managers, you have uh, people that sell boxes. I mean, the future is is, en is, is endless. And I yeah. think thinking that way is, is, um, is not right because you only see, if you only see one thing, you're only going to get one thing. Yeah. But um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of want in the produce industry. I mean, I would love to see better packaging, uh, more uh, biodegradable packaging for grapes, awesome. uh, stuff made out of things that have less pick impact on the world. And I mean, that's stuff that not even me, I don't even have that capacity. I don't know where to start, but young kids are really engulfed in that kind of thinking. Um, James Martin, another, uh, oh, James Martin's doing some great exactly. Stuff, yeah. I mean, he's, I know you're going to, you might have him on the show one day, but he does I, great stuff. And I invited him Okay, and you know, I'm waiting for him to finally give in. <laughs> Um, but he's a little bit hesitant. He I doesn't, like the, he doesn't, like, the, yeah, he doesn't like the spotlight as much. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, that's what I feel. I mean, there's just a lot of things that uh, me, and I'm a, I'm a younger part of the generation, but my father and people of his generation and, and anywhere in the middle, there's just a lot of things, um, and a lot of it has to do with technology that we just don't know. Yeah, and absolutely. you young kids are the ones that can help us do it. And I'd love to see high school programs being made um, just to help us. I mean, any, anything... Anything that you that uh, you can think that we're not thinking that we're not already doing. Yeah, I mean, that would be that would be great. Absolutely. I mean, to get, I mean, to really demonstrate to the younger generation that there is value in absolutely. working in produce. I mean, mm -hmm. besides the fact that you get to travel, I mean, yeah. all the time. I mean, you just got back from a Mexico trip. Um, mm -hmm. Have you had a chance to go to Canada yet, or go to Canada every once in a while? Yeah, yeah you for go to work. Washington D.C. for Washington, your, for the Washington trip. Absolutely. You so you see a lot of stuff. I mean, I mean, for me, traveling is. Part of learning, yeah. uh, you get to see how the people live. Yeah. You get to see how the people eat. Absolutely. I mean, as a produce guy, I go to I go to supermarkets all over the world, and I just see where things are, um, who's buying what, what's available, what's in season, what's not in season, what have I never seen before, and stuff like that. What's working, what's not working, and there's so many different things besides just selling or loading trucks that have to do with produce. Oh yeah. That uh, I mean, I'm just excited to have somebody. Tell me something new. Well, you know, when I was doing my work for the Fresh Produce Association last year, mm -hmm. I really got to see, I mean, what it takes and what, what the whole process is to get a tomato, you know, for mm -hmm. example, from the field, I mean, from the seed mm -hmm. to your dinner table. Absolutely. And how many jobs it provides. Mm -hmm. I mean, how much, you know, the, just the, the cycle that Absolutely. it goes through. I mean, and it's, it's, a, it's this incredible give and take between... Mm -hmm two countries two cultures two economies that mm -hmm. that boosts both mm -hmm. and <coughs> i mean you know produce is the forefront of that and the most amazing thing is i mean in all these jobs and all these things that happen in between the end result is someone eating it and exactly. you're feeding people so i mean at the end of the day yeah that exactly. makes you feel good because somebody's gonna eat your fruit Absolutely. someone that painstakingly all the work that you went through all the works that your growers went through the packers people that work in the farms customs you me yep. everybody's in this chain and uh it's a beautiful thing to know that at the end of the chain somebody's eating it so absolutely that's awesome and you know another thing and we're talking we're talking about innovation in the produce industry mm -hmm. and the changes the way the industry has changed is um you know i grew up here and my dad was a customs agent mm -hmm. for nearly 40 years and i remember when seasons were a thing i mean seasons are hardly a thing now i mean year-round produce mm -hmm. um thankful to you know produce that comes up from mexico um it combined with produce that comes from california even produce that comes from florida mm -hmm. that comes from both countries and all over both countries provides us with fresh quality fruits mm -hmm. and vegetables all year round exactly you know and innovation is part of that i mean you talked about new technology that's coming up that i mean that we don't understand right now <laughs> yeah. but but it's necessary for you know absolutely for the younger generation to to take the reins on absolutely i mean 
you know, biodegradable packaging, like you mentioned, mm-hmm. would be, I mean, plastic is the danger of plastic mm-hmm. is huge right now. I mean, it's a really big deal. Mm-hmm. And so we need the young people to come up and to change and not just change, but, but advance the industry, which is already moving, moving forward. I mean, Absolutely. ahead at an incredible rate. Absolutely. I mean, over the last 10 years, it's, mm-hmm. it's completely advanced. Absolutely. And also, I mean, the food safety <laughs> is a big thing too with FISMA being implemented this year, the Food Safety Modernization Act, that basically just puts us in uh, 21st century of food. I mean, we are living in the world of the safest food that we can consume. Everything has been checked and double checked to make sure that uh, the food that we're feeding your families is uh, grown responsibly, so. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, also Rosie, when, you know, when I was talking to her about, before the show, when I was doing my, you know, my narrative on her, um, she said this really, really cool comment that I really liked, and it was about, um, you know, people like you who come from produce families and, and go into sales, how you're not just selling fruits and vegetables, you're not just selling tomato, you're not just mm-hmm. selling a watermelon, you're selling your history. You know, do Absolutely. you feel that when you're when you're on the phone with a, you know? Absolutely. I mean, there's a room in the FPAA. Um, what's the, what's the, the name gallery. of the room? Yeah. The gallery. I mean, the gallery is, uh, one time I, I told somebody, we had a meeting in that room, I said, I'd love to um, have the pictures of today posted on that wall 20, 25, 40, 50 years in the oh, future. Yeah. That'd be awesome. I'd love to see moss melons and grapes there because we weren't one of the original ones. But I'd love to see this industry advancing that much that moss melons is one of the old ones. Yeah. And there's pictures in a hall X amount of years later yeah. of this produce oh, industry today. They're going to have to expand the gallery. They're going to have yeah. to tear down some walls and, and so. expand that place because there's, there's yeah, a, lot to, a lot of stories to tell. And it's, it's absolutely, and it's just so much history, so deep, and there's uh, so much still to come. And I'm just one of them. There's a lot of, lot of people doing their job and doing what needs to get done to absolutely. move this thing forward. So we're excited. Absolutely. Now, speaking of the association, coming up is the 50th annual Fresh Produce Convention. I mean, that's historic. 50 years, Huge. man. That's Huge. crazy. Well, that's like the sil- the gold anniversary or yeah. platinum anniversary or something, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, it's been 50 years of convention. I mean, last year was the first convention that I was actually able to be involved in. Mm-hmm. And I was blown away. Mm-hmm. You know, I can just imagine what the 50th is going to be. It's got to be. It's going to be great. I mean, everything from the showcase to the guest chefs that we have coming by to the speakers to the... Uh, go- the the golf to the yeah. the pillars where Rosie's going to be honored. I yeah, mean, it's that's it's, awesome, huh? it's great every year, and it's just so yeah. cool that uh, I know somebody so well, and they're also part of our company. It's just very cool, and, and, and I'm, yeah. I'm very happy for her that uh, she's getting recognized and very much deserved because she's a big part of Nogales. She's a big part industry. of Nogales, not just not just produce, but all over Nogales. Absolutely, right? yeah. She's very it's the the award is very well deserved. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any memories of the convention when you were younger? So I've only been in the produce industry for about seven years. I'm uh-huh. 27 years old. Yeah. So, I but I would go when I was a little bit younger, like maybe in high school, I'd go with my parents, and yeah. I just see a sea of people. Yeah. And as a kid in high school, going to these things, like you know what your dad does for 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 a job, but you don't ever really get to go to the fun stuff. Yeah. And I went to the fun stuff. Yeah. And I basically would just ask my mom, like, who are these people? Well, they all work there. Do y'all wear produces? Not all of them, but some of them are salesmen. Some of them do this, some of them do that. I mean, it's just so, so for me as a young 18 year old kid to see this huge collection of people that all work in produce in the town where I grew up and I didn't know half the faces in the crowd. Yeah. I mean, that was humbling. That's awesome to see that this whole community is behind feeding the world. The world. Yeah, so, feeding the world. Yeah. It's so. awesome. I mean, Nogales, it's a, whor- it's a hub. Absolutely. It's a hub for produce. And, mm-hmm. and that's what the convention represents. That's Absolutely. why it's here. I mean, it's, it's in Tubac now, um, but it used to be in Nogales. I mean, the reason it's in Tubac is for, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why mm-hmm. it can do everything at once. But it represents the produce industry in Nogales. Absolutely. I mean, it's to celebrate um, the industry and to celebrate the upcoming season and to commemorate the history of produce. I mean, it is, it's an incredible event. Absolutely. And I mean, since we're on it, I mean, you can go to, actually we posted a link here on We Love Nogales. You can go to the Fresh Produce Association's Facebook page. You can go to their um, website, www.freshfrommexico.com and register. And I mean, this really is not an event you wanna miss. You want to be there. And I mean, if you buy a ticket, you'd also get free drinks, right? You get some free drinks, don't you? I think that's the... Yeah, yeah I, mean, I got not, some free drinks gonna, last year. Yeah. 
And so, so you get some drinks. It, it, it's great food, great it, drinks, great yeah. company. Learn a lot of stuff. Uh, meet a lot of faces. A lot of fun. Uh, yeah. And uh, the pillars is another great. It event, is. So, I, mean, so. I mean, and and there's lots of different things for everybody. I mean, are they going to do the culinary showcase this year? They are doing the culinary oh, okay. showcase now, this year. I got to talk about the culinary showcase because oh, yeah. that was that last mm-hmm. year when I went. That was incredible, and they had. All these different groups setting mm-hmm. up, making food right there for you to, to mm-hmm. eat and sample. Yeah. They had live music, and the consulate was there. Mm-hmm. It was incredible. Yeah. I mean, that was probably one of my favorite parts. I mean, they also have helicopter rides. Get helicopter to, rides, yeah. Get to ride, yeah. you know, over, you know, the the whole industrial area oh. of Nogales. Mm-hmm. Check out the warehouses. Absolutely. Look along the border. And don't don't overlook it uh, because I was a chef. So uh, uh, Chef Pati. Uh, Ginich, is that how you pronounce her name? She's, she's a special so. guest as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah, she's uh, a cool. I mean, Mexican chef, uh, going to showcase a lot of the produce that we do in Ogala. So I'm really excited for that as, uh, yeah. to meet her. So that's, that's <laughs> Very cool. And yeah. the culinary showcase is free to get into. You don't actually need a ticket, right? So so that's 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 awesome. Um, and then that's Friday, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. I believe so. Uh, the Friday afternoon. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Friday night is the gala, which, I mean... It, that's when you have all the guest speakers. Mm-hmm. That's when you've got um, all the really good food. Mm-hmm. Um, Rosie will be honored at the gala, mm-hmm. and I mean, if anything, it's a it's a opportunity to to get dressed real fancy. There you go, and go out and feel special. <laughs> Absolutely, and I mean, and just the history in that room. It's oh, yeah. uh, I've gone to three of them. Uh, I got to see the Bennons. I got to see Hymas parents last year, the Chamberlains, and uh, I mean it's just beautiful. The montages you guys put together, yeah. the stories, the the speeches when they go up and say thank you. I mean, uh, it's just beautiful. Yeah, it was yeah. great. It's it's it, it's really great. Mm-hmm. great so event. again, I mean, the probably the easiest way for you to to register would be to go to www.freshfrommexico.com and go to their events tab. And it'll be the first one there. It'll probably be right on the homepage. I mean, they're they're really making a big deal about this. It's going to be awesome. I mean, 50 years. 50 it's, years. It's crazy. It's historic. Mm-hmm. Um, so, thank you, Mikey. You know, I think I think we've wrapped up everything that we have to cover right now. Excellent. Um, I'm really glad that you made it on the show. Thank I'm you, really, man. You know, thank you for accepting the invite. Um, you know, I met your dad for the first time when I went to go interview Rosie at, at your guys' office, and your dad's awesome. You know, you're, you've got an awesome family. I mean, you've got an awesome staff. You, it was really cool watching you guys work. <laughs> you know, even when I when I got there and I got some really good pictures of you guys mm-hmm. just while you were working, and Thank you. and you guys didn't skip a beat. Yeah. You know, it's kind of what it's all about, my friend. Yeah. But it's uh, know, it's fun. So it reminded me of like Wall Street. You know, <laughs> hey, people are just like, oh yeah, <laughs> pick up another phone. Okay, I got this. I got this. Okay, can you take this? And then it was it's was, it was so cool. Yeah, but yeah. we care a little more than Wall Street. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, <laughs> absolutely. We're, we're, Not to compare them too much to Wall Street. Yeah, you know? we, we we're a little different. But yeah, you're you're right. I mean, it is so fast and furious sometimes, and um, I mean that's just just uh, goes to show you. I mean, there's a demand to feed. So absolutely, we got to fill that demand. Yep. And Nogales Produce feeding the world. Should, they should coin, the association should use that, huh? Maybe. Definitely. All right, Mikey. <laughs> sure, thank, thank you so, so much. much. Appreciate right. it. Thank and um, so we're going to come back right now in just a, a couple of minutes. We're going to have the, like I said, the um, Trocas, uh, Trucas, Nogales Truck Club, and we're going to talk about what they've got going on. All right, we'll be back in just a few minutes.